There are a few sound functions I'd like to show you that are more advanced than what I've shown you in the previous video. And the first one I'd like to show you is audio sound length. I've split my radio object into two different ones just to make it a little more easy to understand. And in this one, it's the same as last time pretty much, but I'm going to show you where I've got start the music. It's still the same. I'm going to do audio play sound and I'm going to use the intro music with a priority of 10 and it's going to loop. That's true. And I'm going to store this index in a variable called BGM. Now, if we turn off this comment, we've got sound length, which is a variable I'm creating in my create event. And I'm storing this index here, which is audio sound length. That's the function I'm going to use. And all it needs is one argument. It wants to know, right down there, is the sound ID. So in this case, I'm giving it BGM, which is right here, which will be this. Now, last time I used the intro song, which is very long, so I've cut it down to a much shorter version, and that's just called BGM ending, just to make it shorter, and it's not going to loop. The reason for that is to show you one way to use audio sound length. I've set an alarm, just alarm zero, and it's going to equal, now if you remember, this is a good way to do timing in your games, room speed times, and then it becomes seconds. Sound length is going to be in seconds. So in this case, I believe it's something around 8.5 seconds. So I'm setting an alarm to whatever the speed of my room is, multiplied by this sound length variable, which is what I'm getting out of this function. So alarm zero is going to equal something along the lines of 8.54 seconds because that's how long this audio file is and that's what this function is doing. It's getting the length of this audio file in seconds. And then you can use it however you want. In this case, I'm going to set this alarm and when it goes off, I'm just simply going to go to the next room, which is an empty room just to show you that it worked properly. So let's take a look at how that function operates. So here we go. So the sound is playing and I can you can see there the length is 8.54 seconds and when it ends, then it should go to the next room. There we go. So that was one way to use the length of a song. I recorded how long the song was in seconds and then used that to create an alarm. And then I can do whatever I want with that alarm and in this case I changed rooms just to show you that hey, it actually worked. The next audio function I want to show you is audio sound pitch. This will alter the pitch, but also the timing, the tempo of whatever sound you're going to be changing the pitch of. In this case, I'm using radio two, and I've already replaced that in this room. You can see down here, it'll say that this is object radio two. If we hop inside, it's pretty much the same. It's I know there's so much here and it's really complicated, but let's just look at what I've got here. It's going to play a song just like before. Instead of doing that sound length that we were doing before, it's just simply going to play the intro song as in the previous video. So that's a lot longer. And what we're going to do is when I use the mouse wheel up and down, I'm going to change the pitch up and down. And for that, all I'm simply doing is changing a variable I created called pitch. Of course, I've put that in the create event, and I started with pitch one. That's the default for a pitch of anything, really, is because it works similar to a percentage, where one is actually a percentage, so there's 100%. So that's normal pitch. And I can change that up and down to a minimum of zero, because once it goes below zero, it's inaudible, it'll be too low to a maximum of five, because anything above that, once again, will be too high a pitch to hear. So I'm going to start with one, and whenever I use my mouse wheel up and down, I'm going to change it by this strange number. So I'm changing it by 0 0.0625. That, if you were to turn it into a percentage, would actually be 6.25%. This number isn't really significant. I chose this number somewhat arbitrarily, and that number is 16. And 100% divided by 16 is 6.25%. So that means every time I scroll up and down, I'm changing the pitch 
of this intro song. See, I'm, I'm telling you right here, here's the function, audio sound pitch, which needs the index, which to be honest, I could just do that because I've also stored the index in that variable, if you remember. And then what the new pitch will be, which obviously I'm going to be affecting. So every time I scroll up and down, I'm changing the pitch of the song by 6.25%. So here's what it looks like when I'm actually running it in game. Okay, so here we are, we're in the room, and as you can see, I've got my pitch set to one, but as I use the scroll wheel up, there we go, I start to affect it by 6.25%. Now, you'll notice it's not only getting higher pitched, but it's also getting faster. The speed is increased as well, so it also does that. And we can bring it back down, nice and low. In fact, we can even go below zero and make it totally inaudible. But let's put it back up to one. There we go. Now, the reason I'm able to do this live, if you remember, is because I use the actual index of the audio, the one that I stored inside the variable BGM. Now, I find this to be the best way to do it. However, you could reference the asset itself, and for that, you'd have to stop and start the audio, and I'll show you what that's like as well. Going back into our script here, I'm referencing BGM. But if I change it to intro on both of them, now I'm not referencing the song that's being played. I'm actually referencing this right here, my actual asset. So what I'm doing is going to be changing the pitch of the asset. Now this won't take effect immediately. I'll have to actually stop the audio and start it again because it has to stop the one that's actually being played grab it again out of my assets, and then play that version to hear the pitch difference. So let me just show you, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are again, we're back in the room, and my pitch is at one. Now remember, this is the variable for pitch, so as I scroll up and down, you'll notice I am changing the variable for my pitch, but you're not gonna hear any change to the actual song, and that's because I'm only changing the variable, and I'm going to be affecting the actual sound asset. The only way that we'll be able to hear the difference is if I stop the song from being played and then play it again. When I play it again, it'll pick up this new pitch. There we go. So now it's really slow and low. And I can put it up to a higher one, but to hear it, once again, I have to stop it and start it again. Now we get a funny little version of it. So that's two different ways you can affect the pitch of your audio. You can either use the index stored inside a variable, or you can reference the asset itself. And that's two very important distinctions to make. Whenever you use audio sound pitch, the first argument is referencing the index. So if you use the asset, you will have to stop your sound and start it again to hear your pitch difference. But if you've stored your index inside a variable, and you tell GameMaker to change the pitch of the variable, that'll be the one that's live, the one that's playing, that one particular instance. So really, it depends on how you want to do it, but I find this is better. Usually you want to be changing your pitch as you go, as it's live streaming in your game. The next advanced audio function I want to show you is channel numbers. You can actually control how many channels you're allowing GameMaker to use. Now for this, I've done something a little different, kind of just for fun. I've actually used the rooms creation code. So that's in the settings tab for the room that you're creating anything for. And there's a little button here for creation code. And this code will take place when the room is created, which means it's before any of the instances are created. So I'm doing that just so that this happens before any of these objects start playing their sounds or, or whatever they're going to do. Now in this case, for audio channel number, which is the function, I'm setting the channels to two. Now I have to give you a little bit of a note here. From what I've seen and from what I've experimented with in GameMaker, I actually can't go below two channels. If I give one as the number of channels, it seems to still have two channels. I don't know if that's because two is the default. I'm not entirely sure how computer audio channels work outside of GameMaker, but just to let you know, uh, I haven't been able to go below two audio channels. For the purposes of showing you audio channels, I've really, really reduced this down to two. So we can only actually play two sounds at once, and once we play a third sound, 
priority will come into effect. Now, if you remember priority, that's uh, the higher priority sounds will be played and the lower priority sounds will be stopped whenever there's a conflict. So what I'm using for this is the object listener. And on my left press, I'm playing a bullet sound with a priority of two. And with my right press, I'm going to play a hit sound with a priority of three. So this actually has a higher priority. Now, if you remember, priority is an arbitrary number you assign to a sound effect. And then, whenever there are more sounds playing than audio channels available, the new sound you're trying to play, if it has low priority, so if you give it any number like one or two or whatever, it's a low number, higher priority sounds will still be heard, and this sound just won't play at all. Um, but if this is a higher priority sound, like, I don't know, it doesn't really matter what the number is, this one will definitely take effect, and any lower priority sounds that are going through any of the available channels will then stop, so that this one can take over the channel. That's how priority works. Uh, I don't know if I explained that well enough in the last video. So, let me just explain how this is going to work. I only have two audio channels, which means I can only play two sounds. So what I'm going to do since this is going to loop, I'm going to play this sound twice, which has a priority of two, which means once I try to play the third sound, the hit sound, which has a higher priority, one of these bullet sounds will stop so that the hit sound can be played because the bullet sound has a lower priority than the hit sound. I'm rambling, so let me just show you what it sounds like in Game Maker. Okay, so here's the room, and for the purposes of this, I'm not going to run the radio. We're just going to have the sound effects that come out of this object listener. So if I left-click once, we're going to get one bullet. And if I left-click a second time, we'll have a second bullet sound effect. So let's start with that. So there's one. There's two. And if I right-click, we've lost one of the bullets. Just in case you couldn't quite hear that, I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to start the music... So that's taking up one audio channel, then I'm going to start the looping bullet, that's going to take up the second and only other audio channel, and then we'll see what happens when I use the hit sound effect. The bullet stopped. And the reason for that is the bullet has the lowest priority number. So once a third sound tried to pass through the only two available audio channels, something had to go away. And for that, it dropped the bullet sound effect because it had the lowest priority. Now, if I had the hit sound going, and I had the music going, and they were all high priorities, 10, 20, whatever I've made it, and I tried to play the bullet sound being at 2 for its priority, it actually wouldn't even sound at all because it's just too low priority. It's just something you gotta have to understand when you do your sound management. You have to determine which sounds are important to you and which sounds aren't. Now, of course, this sounds pretty complicated, and for the most part, including mobile devices, you get a lot of audio channels to work with nowadays, so you don't really have to worry too much, especially for simplistic games. To put it into contrast, the default for audio channel number is actually 128. So you can have up to 128 music files or sound files or whatever you're using for audio channels playing all at one time before you would ever run into an overlapping problem that would require you to use some sort of priority system. The last two advanced audio functions that I want to show you are just inside this object radio one. I've removed the listener from the room so we can concentrate on just the radio. And inside we're going to focus on two main things. In our step event, we have a code block here called volume controls. What I've done is created two if statements, and it just checks if I'm holding the up key or the down key. So those are the up and down arrow keys. And inside, there's another conditional statement, which just says if volume is less than one, one being the maximum, 100% gain or volume, then we're going to increase it by 0 0.05 or 5%. And this is the function. Audio master gain. Think of gain simply like volume. It's going to increase or decrease how much is heard. And this is going to affect the master volume, the master gain. So that's 
absolutely all sounds and all music in the game. This function has one argument, and it's just the gain. It just wants to know how much volume should be heard uh, up to a percentage. So in this case, I'm going to set it to vol, which is a variable that I've set up for volume. And I'm going to make it equal one at the beginning. So it's just 100% gain. So if I hold up or I hold down, I'm going to increase or decrease my volume by 5%. And then once I've done it, output this new volume, this new gain. So let's just go into our room and, and take a look at how that affects our volume. So we've got our sound playing, it's our music, it's coming out of the radio, and I've written here that volume is at 1, it's at 100%. So if I hold the down key, there we go, we can actually decrease the volume. Now it's still playing. You just can't hear it, the sound was never stopped, it's just so low, it's just inaudible. But that's a simple way to change volume up and down. Of course, you could use this in a much better way. Let's say you needed to pause your game and you wanted absolutely all sounds and, and all music to stop whenever your game is paused. Another way you can do it other than pausing all of the audio is actually just change your audio master gain to zero. There you go. So whenever you pause the game, just put in this function and it's at zero. And then when you unpause, you can set it back to one. But in this case, I want active volume controls while the game is playing. This you could also add to a slider. You could have some sort of volume slider that the user can use so that he or she could change the volume of the music or sound um, in the game. But remember, this is master. This is all of the music, all the sound. They're not going to be separate from each other. So you're probably going to ask, well, how do I change the sound of separate files? And for that, we're going to use something else. For my release space event, I'm going to run this action called fade out sound. Well, I've called it fade out sound, and what it's doing is using the function audio sound gain. So instead of master, which is all of the sound globally inside of your game, this one allows you to choose some sort of sound index. And it's best to use an index here instead of using the name of the asset. So if you remember from, not in my initialization but in here I've stored whenever I play this sound or this song I always store it inside a variable so I can reference it and this is one good reason you would want to store it in a variable because this function requires you to put in an index and if you remember this means that it'll update the sound live while the game is playing if I change the assets volume then it would change over here, back, you know, behind the scenes, but not live while the game is playing. You would have to stop and then start the sound again to hear the difference. This will do it while the sound is streaming. There are two other arguments that are required for this particular function, and it's kind of interesting. The first one is level. So this is kind of like your game. This is what you want the volume to be. Now I'm setting it to zero. I want the sound to go away completely. Sounds reasonable, so why do we need this other argument? Well, the third and final one is time. This is in milliseconds. So this is how long it'll take for the sound that's currently playing, my BGM, to get to this amount, whatever it wants to be, like 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, whatever you're doing, you can even increase it higher. In this case, I'm going to go down to no sound. How long it takes from its current volume or gain to get to this level or volume or gain and I've chosen 3000 milliseconds or three seconds so when I press the space bar or perhaps release the space bar the music that is currently playing will take three seconds to fade away to zero of course I could say one millisecond or even possibly zero and it'll happen instantaneously but I'm gonna do this so you can hear it fade away Okay, so we've got our music playing out of our radio. This won't be relevant. This was only relevant for the master game. That's where I was using this variable. And when I press the space bar, our music starts to fade away. And over three seconds, 3000 milliseconds, the sound will go to zero. So this is another function that you can use. Similar to master gain, except this one 
targets a specific sound that is playing or a specific audio file, be it music or sound. And then you can make it fade in, fade out. I can make it fade in from zero if it started at zero for its volume. And then you just decide how much time it should take to get to that volume. So here's another way you can manipulate the volume of a specific sound file. And now I hope you understand there are various ways to manipulate specific sounds, or all of your sounds globally, or changing the pitch, or whatever you need to do. These are all the functions you can use to change the sounds that are currently playing in your game. <laughs>